Let us all stand, please. Everybody, stand, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Listen now, listen. I want you to hold hands with the people next to you. Come on, hold hands. That's right. Hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on to each other. Standing with brothers and sisters. Hold on. Listen now, listen, listen. Come on, man. Oh, God, we know you're here. We can feel you in the music and the singing. The air itself is electric with your presence. But even more, we can reach out and touch you this morning. Because whenever we touch the hands of our sisters and our brothers, we find you. Your own spirit comes rushing through us. Oh God, fill us with your spirit of joy and hope and liberation. Set us free this morning. Help us to drop whatever baggage we carried in here. Whatever it is that might keep us from celebrating and from opening ourselves to you and to each other. Electrify our souls, Lord. Change us, renew us, lift us up with love. Oh God, our mother, this truly is a day to celebrate. Today we recognize and give thanks for women in our lives, those who have gone before and those still with us. Women of courage, women of pride, women of dignity, all those who suffered Yes. yet somehow survived. All those who were tortured but yeah. still triumphed. All those whose society called bad, stupid, sick, crazy, worthless, useless, but who still somehow managed to embrace life and to create life and to make life better for their daughters and granddaughters and all the women not yet born. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for their strength and their tenderness. Thank you for their loving anger. Thank you for the gentle power deep within womankind. As we remember their struggle for freedom, may we find the courage to be free ourselves as we think about their victory over pain and abuse and discrimination. May we find the voice to speak out and act up against all the, all the oppression that our sisters have suffered, those sitting right next to us and those around the world. Oh God, on this day of celebration, may her history become her story. May her story become our story. And together, may all of us find a new way to live. A way where justice and equality and freedom from fear will be our gift to the future. In that hope, we pray and say together, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. on. Shalom. Shalom. Salam. Salam. Yeah. We're going to sing, leaning on the everlasting arms. The words are on the wall. We want you to sing. Let's stand up, folks. Stand up. This is blind. Stand up. Yeah. Words are on the wall.
I want you to turn around and embrace your brothers and sisters. Embrace each other. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it is crowded in here. the Life Magazine article. Raise your hand. Oh yeah, right on. Thank you. It is undoubtedly the most, it's, it's, the, it's great. It's a great article. Great article. I got to tell you this real quick. A gentleman said to me downstairs, I came here because I thought that maybe you had a nightclub. <laughs> He said, I'm a Christian, but something got to me. I hope it did. Thank you very much. Let us move on. I, I just hope it did because what people find difficult to accept here is the spirit. That's right. See? See, they want us to do certain things, and that makes us a Christian. No, just the spirit. That's right. If you love everybody, let the love become a part of what happens rather than start criticizing, calling folks something else, okay? Please. I, I thought Christians were supposed to love everybody. Of course, that's not true, but anyway, I thought that. I'm, I'm just thinking, that's all. I hope you can find some place to stand or sit or what have you. At this time, we're going to present the Glide Ensemble, and the first number they're going to do, come on, Beryl, and tell hey! them about it. The lyrics to this song were written for a mother to her son who was leaving the homeland. Uh, she knew that there was a chance she would never see him again. I'd like to dedicate it to women of all walks of life around the world. Summer's 
see Ron here. Come on, Ron and Claire. They're going to take up the offering and make the announcements while he's making his statement. Let me whisper. Good morning. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Ron. Just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> this is a great honor to be a part of this women's program, and you'll see that in a few minutes, because women are on the move. I know this one woman who won the lottery. Yeah, she won the lottery and she called home to her husband and said, Harry, you won't believe it, but pack all your bags, all your clothes. We've just won the lottery. And he said, I can't believe it. Should I pack the winter clothes or the summer clothes? She said, all the clothes. I want you out the house right now. <laughs>
right now. <laughs> I don't know about all women, but I know if the women here wanted a lottery, they would tie, they would pledge, they would give. Because they are the heart of Glide, the women. They have a great program planned for you. And so at this time, will the ushers please stand and come forward and collect? The ushers have uh, been very dedicated. We have Easter coming up, three services on Easter, and they work so hard. So let's give the ushers a great hand. I want to acknowledge also Vert over the sound and Fran over the lights. Thank you. Thank you. Our bishop has said, Glide is the heart of the gospel. Continue to be the heart of the gospel by your loving, your giving, and your sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Claire Robot, and I'm a longtime member of Glide Church. Hi. And I'm Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Before I make the announcements, I want to tell you a little bit about women's history from my point of view. I'm the granddaughter of two Arab Im immigrants, two women who came to this country and were married off at 15 to men that they didn't know. And that's women's history. That's right. I was I, I'm a, a daughter of a woman who was um, not allowed to go to college because women didn't go to college. They didn't need to do that. And so um, even though my mother was the smartest one in the family, she didn't get to go. And so she made sure that I went, and I'm the first woman in my family to graduate from college. That's right. Thank you. I'm also the daughter of a mother who in the 50s was given alcohol and drugs as a way to deal with her problems by her doctors and so died at 50 years old as, of addiction. That's right. And I am a woman who has been part of the transition generation from the old way of being a woman, which was to be dependent and a victim, to the new way of being a woman, which is to be independent and interdependent. That's right. I'm glad I'm a woman. So I have a bunch of announcements here. We have tapes and CDs um, uh, downstairs of this wonderful Glide Ensemble. You also can buy a video of today's celebration, this very one you're watching, right downstairs afterwards. You can buy t-shirts, you can buy sweatshirts, you can buy books by Jan and Cecil and the children and the women of this church. And um, all the proceeds benefit the Glide programs directly. We also welcome visitors today to our information table after the celebration in Freedom Hall. We are putting together a children's theater group, and if you're involved in theater um, and you're an adult and like to help, please contact Charlie at the volunteer table downstairs after this service. We'd also like to invite more children to join our youth choirs. If you're interested, come to the rehearsal following the 11 a.m. celebration in room 206 today. If you can't come today, the group rehearses every Sunday except the second Sunday each month. Easter is on March 30th. Sign up for some of the Easter um, volunteer um, needs that we have downstairs, serving and preparing food and many other things. Just ask at the volunteer table. We need lots of volunteers for Easter. And also, um, if you'll bring sealed candy or new empty Easter baskets for us to give to our kids at Easter, um, if you're willing to do that, please see Laurie downstairs in Freedom Hall. You're going to be going from table to table. We can see that. And you're going to get hungry, and we have a fabulous food sale. So the staff uh, of Glide, the Glide women staff, and um, some of the volunteers from the food program have created a fabulous meal for you to buy downstairs, spaghetti, fried chicken, potato salad, all the fixings. So please go down afterwards, and again, the proceeds from that will go to support women who are most affected by the welfare cuts that are happening this day and, and this time. And there will be a poetry reading at 1 o'clock. Um, everybody is welcome right after the food and, and all of the other things that you get to sign up for. Just go on downstairs for that. And last but not least, um, there will be a table downstairs where I will be standing inviting you to sign uh, your name to a letter to Governor Wilson asking him to take another look at this thing he's calling welfare reform. Yeah. 
So we invite all of you to come downstairs in solidarity with the women who are self suffering most from this and sign the letter. I'm going to read you the letter um, real fast here so you'll know what it says. Dear Governor Wilson, we the members of the Glide Church congregation or extended family that practices diversity and unconditional acceptance petition you to reverse your punitive actions committed in the name of welfare reform against poor people, children, women, families, the elderly, and immigrants. Our community abhors the callous and in, 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 inhumane treatment of those whom you would further marginalize. Glide has more than 7,000 members, all races, ages, cultures, classes, genders, sexual orientations, professionals, academicians, street people, activists, advocates, suburbanites. As a community, we are bound by conscience and embrace the fact that all people are created equal and deserve compassion, opportunity, and justice. We invite you, Governor Wilson, to come to Glide. <laughs> and to experience a new community that celebrates its diversity. As an extended family, we have experienced the power of compassion. We urge you to call a moratorium on further punitive actions against the poor and withdraw your unrealistic requirement of one year's AFDC assistance for all new applicants for aid. As governor of the most diverse state in the union, your office would mandate you to embrace compassion and concern for all its citizens and non-citizens. The following signatures are an indication of our solidarity, and we represent many more in numbers. We are voters who impact elections. And the people are moving. The women are moving. So come on down and sign the letter. Thank you. Next Sunday, we will have here at the 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and we're doing a special celebration at 1, CDs of the new recordings that we have just finished. And they'll be ready next Sunday. Okay? So if you have not come to church and stayed all day long, next Sunday's your chance. You got a great opportunity next Sunday. To we're going to have food here, turkey dressing with all the trimming. So you come and celebrate and eat and sit around and talk. You know, we used to talk a lot. Amen. Sit around and talk with your folks and get to meet new folks and just stay here. And, and we're going to be doing all the new numbers, not all of them, but many of them next Sunday, okay? So come in and just share with us, beginning at the 9 o'clock. Also, we would like to invite you to join Glide. We did more people this time last year as members than we have done this year. I want to catch up and surpass this, okay? So would you just, I know some of you said, well, we'll wait, and you wait till the next Sunday, and then you wait again. Stop waiting so long. <laughs> Come on home now, okay? Go back through that door and the first door to your left, and there'll be people to receive you after this 11 o'clock celebration. Also, where's Michael Fargo? I know he's hiding. Where is he? See, he's hiding. I know he is. Michael, if you will go to Freedom Hall after this is over, you will see work of a genius, a very creative person, Michael Fargo. And there were other people who helped him, like uh, Lisa and Ntambi and Elizabeth and Serena and others from this magnificent exhibit, a great exhibit about women, for women, with women. And so take the time and the opportunity to do that. Oh, and Jan says, it's evolving. So in other words, all the women are not up there yet. You will be up there, though, sooner or later. We're just going to let it evolve, you know? Just let it evolve. It grows, it grows, it grows. Now I'm going to take time out to... We've got two... Um, am I right now? I've, yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna christen some babies at this time. I want the, uh, what, the Buchanan family, Conboy family. Are you here, Buchanan? Where are you? Where are you? Come on. Come on. 
We'll take you first. Hmm? I know I'm going to do this one first, and then we'll call the next one up after this one. Because sometimes it gets kind of crowded up here. That's right. Come on up here. How you doing, brother? Is this Paris? Uh -huh. Come on over here. Yeah. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's right. Hey, what's happening? Okay. Hey, man, what's happening? All right. Yeah. We are here. Are we? Yeah. In the christening of a child, it is an act of innocence, an act of helping to keep a child where that child grows with the family, grows in love and compassion and courage, where the child grows to be whatever the child needs to become under your tutelage, under your care, under your direction. But we also have, look at this family, this extended family, which is a part of your family. We want you to know, you got a heck of, look at this family here. Yeah, look here, look here. Paris is laughing about that. I don't blame you, Larry, Paris, I'd laugh to it, yeah. But what we do is we want to make sure that the growth and the love and the courage is a part of all of us. So in light of that then, we take this child and we christen him. Come here, Perry, come here, Peter. <laughs> Paris, I christen you in the name of the Father, the Mother, the Son, and also of the family. I christen you in the name of the Spirit that comes to us and makes us one. And finally, I christen you in the name, if you don't drink up our water, but anyway, <laughs> I christen you in the name of those who share life rather than always create death. So because of that, here you are. Paris. Some child. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, mom. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Come here. Come here with yourself. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got another family. I think. Where's my. Oh. This is the Klein family. Will the Klein family come now, please? This is Rio Klein, right? Come on, come on over here, don't be, come over here. Come over here, that's right, good, 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 good. This is the Klein family, this is Rio, right? Right, right, okay. It, the, don't, don't worry about it. You know, I'm gonna t I tell you, like I told the folks at nine o'clock, a child will, uh, will listen, you upstage you any day. So, you know, who, you'd have to flow with it, that's all. We come together with you at this time for this act of innocence and of courage and conviction. You, the family, surely will raise Rio to be strong and courageous and loving. And we're with you. We support you. This act of, of christening is an act that we come to share with you and you come to share with your family. This is your extended family. And so in light of that, come around here, my man. Come here, Rio, come here. That's, oh, such a sweet kid. I christen you in the name of the mother, the father, and the family, and the spirit. I christen you in the name 
of the community, and I find I christen you in the name of those who come to share, the godparents, and all who come to share in this act. Right. Now, there you are. This is a song that was written by Jan and I and John for the women. It's a women's song. Marion Anderson, Lakota women, women, women 
I got to tell you what happened at the nine o'clock, and because there's always something to take care of here, I had to run out and take care of a mat outside a few minutes ago. But at the nine o'clock, on that side, there was a man sitting there, and they came and told me that he was drinking. So we go back, and I just said to him, come on, brother, go with me. And he gets up, and we go outside. And after we got outside, I said, hey, brother, you know, you just can't sit there and drink. At this point, he said, let's, you know, let's get you some coffee down here, work with you, happy to help you out. He said, Cecil. I said, what? Didn't Jesus turn water into wine? <laughs> I say, yeah, and I'm trying, to turn uh, I'm trying to turn wine into water. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and we got a new somebody, ticket woman, man, whoever it is out there. Traffic, thank you, traffic person. Started giving away tickets on folks. So we had to go out and take care. <laughs> 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 so whoever's ticket, whoever has tickets, make sure we get them. Okay? I, it's just two. There would have been many more. If, okay. God, man. I want to thank those who asked me to say a few words to try to put in context something about women from a spiritual frame of reference as well. Not that the others won't do it as well, but I was asked to do this. I'll do it very briefly, and then we'll hear from persons that I will introduce and present in just a minute. When you hear me talk about angels, I'm not talking about sweet, nice, pretty. That's right. No, I'm talking about courageous. I'm talking about women who are not only on the move, but women who have stood up in time and in history and changed the course of history. In the context of the Bible, when one talks about messengers, one looks at the angels. We sing a song here entitled, The Angels Are Watching Over Me. And it's significant in regards to the Old and New Testaments because what it is, it's about messengers who are called angels, who protect, who prevent, who appear in events like the Moses story or the Red Sea story. Angels constantly moving in events with people, articulating and interpreting. And there's no doubt about it, in the New Testament, like in the Old Testament, the, 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 the first few chapters of those testaments will lay claim to more angels being talked about than other segments, perhaps, of, of either of the testaments. It is because in the Old Testament there was folklore Folks, people, telling the story about the angels, and they made sure that those angels had the phenomenal expression of being somewhat divine and human. So the angels were that's not divine. So the articulation is that there is a debate, perhaps, not so heavy, but still some discussion going on about the angels. Who are they? And what are they? Are they, are they just solely emissaries of God? Well, if they are emissaries of God, are they solely spiritual? Are they also human? I, I contend that angels come in many forms. And they come in human and divine ways. 
and we must accept the fact that when they come, they're going to say something to us. Because why? They're messengers. That's right. If a messenger comes to you, the messenger just doesn't stand there and say, well. No, the messenger says, I am here because I want to warn you. I want to tell you. I want you to understand. I've got something for you. I bring you good tidings of great joy. And so that's what the messengers do. And as the messengers contend with history, what we see is that in the New Testament, a great messenger, the angel Gabriel, comes to Mary, one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible, and tells her, be not afraid. Stop being afraid. It's the same thing that we can hear today. Don't be so scared. Can't you live your life? Do you always have to be down and out and victimized by circumstances? Do you always have to go around with your head down and your heart heavy and your mind going in all kinds of directions? Can't you have some clarity every once in a while? Can't you stand up? Don't be afraid. Be yourself, but don't be afraid. And so the angel says to Mary, don't be afraid. You're going to have a child. It will be a holy child. Call him Jesus. And she said, oh, my God. (laughs) She said, I haven't even been with the man I'm going to get married to. Angel said, don't worry about it. We got it fixed up, right? (laughs) I have a friend years ago used to walk around and said, well, I don't know how I got pregnant. She often used the Mary story. (laughs) Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Stop being afraid. Don't you know you're about to give birth to a new people? To a new person? Don't you know that you're going to be new? You're going to be pregnant and in some time you're going to be birthing your life? Can't you understand that? And the important thing that the angel and Mary did, when Mary found out about it, she goes down to see her friend, her close friend, Elizabeth. And they meet each other. And when they meet each other and greet each other, Elizabeth is pregnant also. And all of a sudden, the baby began to jump and and kick in her womb. And she said, oh, Lord, what's happening to me? And all of a sudden, the message was, this is the Holy Spirit. That baby's alive and kicking and jumping. Don't you know that? When the spirit comes, you know, folks, oh, Lord, we can't do this because it's, you know, we're in the womb of the church and we can't act out anything. We, life comes with babies kicking and jumping. I know because I remember when I kicked and jumped in my mother's womb. I can tell you that my mother knew she was getting something out of the ordinary because when I came out, I was yelling and screaming and I'm still yelling and screaming. And finally then, if women are messengers, the Lord is with you. Don't you know that? No matter what you face, the Lord is with you, with us. Don't be afraid. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Messengers of life, that's who they are. Messengers of peace, that's who you are. Messengers of courage and good news. Messengers of glad tidings. Messengers of good love and great hope. Messengers of sorrow. Messengers of healing. Messengers of weeping. Oh, Mary, don't you weep and don't you moan. Messengers of shouts and yells and messengers of stuff, like the beating of the drums and, 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 and like pianos and horns playing. Like instruments, women singing their song, as Jan will talk about. Hand clapping women, liberation women, justice women who profoundly experience and, pro- pro- and provide justice. 
emancipation. Women who are in emancipation. Women who are redeeming the world. Yes, it is liberation time. It is emancipation time because the messengers who come to us are letting us know that they have a message that we must hear and we must understand and we must respond to. Thank God for the women messengers. And now, may I bring to you a very courageous, smart, hard-working, intelligent, loving, Lord knows she is something, the director of programs and president of the corporation, Janice Mercatani. Thank you, Cecil. In celebrating Women's History, you know at Glide we celebrate it every day. And I'm so grateful for this minister, this husband, who celebrates all people and who fights beside women for their liberation and their justice fiercely and struggles fiercely with himself to make sure that he indeed practices liberation and justice in our personal relationship. I was <laughs> I'm so glad that he is strong enough to do that. I was saying to um, Cecil and Jody last night that I was full with anxiety and fear about being before you. You know, Cecil is so generous in sharing this platform. And I was trying to figure out why because, you know, I've spoken many times since the 60s with poetry and spoken before many universities and colleges. And, I, and, I, and I'm realizing that, you know, when Cecil was ill for those six weeks and he was gone, and I was so angry. I was angry and worried and in pain, and not just because he was ill, but I was, I was angry because I had, it's such a responsibility. It's this, this celebration is such a responsibility because what Cecil has created is such a gift. You know, you come here and you don't, I don't think you come here expecting us to be anybody except who we are. And that's probably the hardest thing of all, is to be real. Because we can't fall back on those degrees and what you earn and how you make up your hair and what you wear because the spirit is not phony here. So it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Um, and it's a great responsibility. And I appreciate every time um, that I'm up here what Cecil and others who speak in this pulpit go through. I said to him after the 9 o'clock that I felt like I had been in the ring with Tyson. <laughs> Or I felt like Sugar Ray Leonard. <clears throat> um, but I am grateful to live with a messenger who perpetually asks of us, what's new? You know, what's new is not being a victim. What's new is power and embracing our power. What's new is not our depression. Because the depression is about being pulled back by that old past of not good enough or never good enough and hopelessness. What's new is joy, the joy that we create each day, the joy that we have of life. What's not new is our invisibility, you know, that invisibility of, of old oppression where women are second class to the bedroom and to ironing boards. What's new is the spirit that makes us visible in all of our power, and all that we embrace, and all the new ways that we become ourselves authentically each day. Well, when Cecil asked me to speak today, and I said, you know, I want to share this platform with women who are telling the truth and creating what's new each day, because every time we tell the truth, we're creating what's new. Every time we tell the truth, the spirit is energized. So I wanted to call up uh, three women up here with me 
who are wonderful, courageous, beautiful messengers. Um, Sandra and Lucinda and Belinda. Two young women, Belinda and Lucinda Ray, have been writing and speaking about a very critical issue. Belinda has performed her script for junior and senior high school students throughout this past year, and Lucinda is a very talented poet, and she's written three volumes of poems. Good morning. My sister and I want to share our story with you. Um, this true story is a part of a script that I've written and performed for middle school and high school students all over the Bay Area, and we'd like to share two incidents with you. One day, we came to Glide, and we went into the children's office, and my mom walked into the room, and she had us sit down. She said, I don't know how to tell you guys this, but I caught HIV. I was angry with her. I was so mad, I was yelling at her. I said, how can you do this to us? How can you do this to us? How can you do this to yourself? I can't believe you. Why didn't you listen to me? Why didn't you stop what you were doing? That's what you get. I didn't know how to react. I didn't say anything. I just sat there. I thought that maybe now all the problems would stop. Maybe she'd realize that she needs to better herself. I didn't say anything because I didn't know how to react. I remember the day. I woke up one morning and the, someone knocked on the door. It was my mother's nurse. I went to go wake up my mother, but when I went into the room, she was lying on her back, her mouth open, breathless. I went to the nurse. My mom's not going to wake up. Well, did you try? No, but she's not going to wake up. I sat onto the couch with my head in my lap, and I wanted to cry, but no, I'm stronger than that. I'm not going to cry. My sister came into the living room, but I still had my head on my lap. I didn't want anyone to see the strength that my mother was draining away from me. I tried to speak to her, but nothing came out but tears. So I wrote it in a letter. Dear Belinda, Mom died this morning. I woke up, and I went into the living room, and there was a strange feeling in the room. I looked over at my sister, and she was writing on a piece of paper. She passed me this note. I opened it, and it said, Belinda, Mom died this morning. My whole body felt empty inside. I didn't know what to feel. I just sat there for about 10 minutes looking at the ground, and I felt nothing. After that, I went into my room, and I cried in my bed. I remember when I was a little girl, and my mother used to rock me in her arms. I felt like nothing could ever harm me. Even though I wish she was here, so she could hold me, so I'd feel like nothing could harm me. And it amazes me that she was so strong that even though we went through all that, she still had the strength to hold me and help me feel safe. I've been through a lot with my mom and my sister. And I know if it wasn't for my mom and my sister that I wouldn't be who I am today. And I want to thank my mom. And I love my mom for creating a young, powerful, intelligent young woman. Another messenger, a woman who was released not only from jail, but from the prisons of addiction and fear, in her liberation and recovery now sings in Poetry for the People and many other GLIDE programs. She tells us what is new in her life, Sandra Prather. Hi. I'm Sandy Prather, and I'm a grateful recovering addict. Um, if I had not came to GLIDE, I would truly be in prison right now facing 25 to life because of the lifestyle that I live. You know, I was not only a convict, but I was a prisoner to drug abuse and alcoholism, criminal behavior. But I came to Glide, and Glide helped free me, mended my broken heart, and given me a second chance to live again. Yes. This poem is called Through It All. Through it all, I choose to be free. Life has only begun for me. I weathered the storm of a difficult beginning. 
They didn't call it child abuse when I was a kid. Still, I forgave them all for what they did. Betrayed, I bravely pushed forward, so willing, so eager to give. Innocent of the life I'd be forced to live. One thing I can truly say that life has molded me into the woman I am today. Experience is the best teacher, someone once said. Yes, 100 lifetimes of experiences dance through my head. Oh, I know secrets I could never tell of scams and schemes that I play oh so well. I sold you your own fantasy for your delight, and you played for it dearly as I passed you the pipe. He said that he loved me and that I had charm, and then he stuck a needle in my arm. Obsessed and distressed was my twilight zone, as slowly everything I cherished, loved and held dear, was gone. My addiction cried out, let the games begin, as getting dope and money was my only friend. From forgery to robbery, I did whatever it took. They called me the predator, the worst kind of crook. I loved to play. Playing was my life, and if I couldn't play you, I'd play your wife. I was... But now, by the grace of God and my guy family, my whole life has changed. My old hellish existence has been rearranged. Old things have passed away, and I'm not the same. Through guide and recovery, now I'm free. It can work for you because it's working for me. Thank you, Sandy and Belinda and Lucinda. Now, in celebration of women, I read this poem that incorporates three poems. What's New is inspired by a sermon by Cecil, and then a poem about past abusive relationships and finding recovery in a new community where love is not a razor that inflicts pain, but is cause for joy as much as we possibly can and cause for singing. And finally, a poem to bad women, that's the ebonics term for extraordinary women. <laughs> What's new? What will we do when the past threatens to enslave us once again? Remind us of slam doors, segregation, glass ceilings. When backroom abortions, anti-affirmative action, three strikes are out, anti-choice and welfare reform assault us. When we face againstness again, against feminists, the poor, immigrants, undocumented aliens, prevention programs, gays, lesbians, ethnics, environment, public education, AIDS research, assistance to seniors, families, and children, we must shout to one another, what's new? We are. We are women turning, transforming, rising up from, gaining strength, women of a new millennium, gathering, standing up, inspired by women in global movements for justice. We do not forget Argentine women who circled Plaza de Mayo searching their disappeared children, singing in prison, shouting for life. Women marching, Spanish mothers fighting drugs, Palestinian, Israeli, Yugoslav mothers who reject war, students of Tiananmen Square, women in children of Soweto armed with stones storming the military, Filipina, Korean, Japanese comfort women fighting sex slavery. What's new? Multitudes of women moving, no longer second class. Hosts of women healing, rejecting subjugation. Legions of women singing, no longer dominated by violence and shame, mute behind our throats. We are unafraid to create a new spirit with men whose compassion aflame. Hear us. What's new? I am. Resisting. Releasing, resisting chains of the past, regaining my own song. I used to sing in the shower, and he threw back the curtain, gagged my child mouth, and dropped me in the drain. I used to laugh at the table, listening to Jack Benny. I know, long time ago. <laughs> and he threw his chopsticks at my eyes, told me girls should be seen 
not heard laughing with teeth all bucked and ugly. I would hum in the morning when the sun rose above my windowsill and he pushed me into the darkness of closet, crushed my breath into stiff trousers. When I grew older, I thought men were sexy who stopped my singing in the shower as I soaked the bruises they had given me like a remembered gift. That they really loved me when they halted my laughter, sealed my lips with blood and broken gums. And it was evidence of affection, undivided attention, when they hushed my humming, tore off a dress cut too low, remade me into a silent, suffocating scarf worn high around my throat. But you called our names, Cecil. A new community growing, loving, mutual men who are moving. When you came to me, Cecil, with songs of life, your open arms deep like a well, from your joy I drank. All people were a choir in the listening range of your voice, circles of women and men whose throats were open like tambourines, liberating laughter and truth. I release fingers of shame from my tongue. I rock to our humming. I am writing in the kitchen, shouting in the closet. My husband laughs when I laugh. The sound is excellent as violins. And I, with all my teeth showing, am singing in the shower to this new day. What's new? A community of hands and arms that wave in protest against rape, violence, femicide, the burning of churches, homophobia, racism, classism, sexism, war. We are pulled by hands of history, borne by the hands of the transplanted, the adventurers, the escapees. We must now be those hands that pull our daughters and our sons to safety, to a new century of justice and hope, like those extraordinary women whose arms cradled us, hands toiled for us, our mothers and grandmothers who nourished us with soul food. Bad women who know how to cook. <laughs> Create a miracle in a pot. Make something out of chicken feet, pig's feet, hog maws, fish heads, fat back, ribs, roots, soy, or red beans. Bad women break the cycle of powerlessness. Mothers who claim life for their children because they don't want them to pimp and deal, beg, kill, mug, steal, gang bang. Bad women pass through a hell called homelessness, can wrestle rats, drunks, and rapists to the mat. Bad women tell those politicians who want to punish the poor that half the women on welfare go on welfare to save their lives, to save the lives of their children, to escape someone violent, then are trapped by poverty because those politicians don't have a clue about no jobs, low wages, high cost child care, and violence always stalking. Yeah. Yeah, I know bad women who stand up in picket lines and fight to determine the destiny of our own bodies, make themselves heard for jobs and justice. Bad women, plump as mangoes, skinny as tallow, tall, short, dark as plums and coffee, light as cream and butter, gold as sun on lemons, finger-popping, hip-shaking, big laugh, wise mouth, hefty-thighed, loud-talking women, hat-wearing, soft-syllable, eyelash-fluttering, tangerine lipstick queens, river-breasted women, small-ankled women who dance without warning, wrap their men or their women around their waists and boogie down till dawn. Bad women resist crack cocaine, violent love affairs, child abuse, and unsafe sex. Bad women don't spend too much time crying, know how to stir tears in her pots of compassion, add some hot sauce, ginger, wasabi, jalapenos, the salt of memory, simmer and resilience, make it taste like home. Bad women can burn. My sisters, let us remain standing. We want you to go downstairs and see Freedom Hall. We want you to also take time out and get some food down there. 
And we want you to come this morning and be a part of this, this incredible place. Join our ranks and be a part of our extended family. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Janice Mary Katane. Yes.